Hello guys, Woolly Creeper here again and uh, today we've got uh, not so much a tutorial as the results of some experiments I've done um, after my space elevator tutorial um, there were a couple of comments on Reddit where I posted the video um, uh, one person saying that he thought that uh, using water in that way for a boat lift um, didn't work anymore as well as saying um, it had been nerfed and that you needed solid source block in order to make it work. Now obviously with Space Elevator that proves that uh, you don't need uh, solid source blocks uh, to to make a, a boat lift work um, but there were a few um, things that uh, I saw to do with uh, blocks being adjacent to the water stream um, that did in fact some irregularities in uh, being able to make the boat uh, lift you up. So um, I constructed a series of water towers here um, to uh, investigate the, um, these things further. So let's get on with it. So the first uh, investigates uh, no adjacent blocks, um, these three sets here. The first one, uh, this is a column made of uh, th these were all water source blocks all the way up um, held in place with signs to stop the water going everywhere so um, for each one of these we're going to demonstrate a whether a boat will go up and b um, our swim speed because there appears to be two swim speeds um, <coughs> uh, when uh, swimming up water and uh, you'll see those throughout the course of the experiment uh, so first off, solid water all the way up. If we drop the boat in the bottom here, you see it rises up nice and smooth, all the way to the top, uh, through the signs because signs only have uh, pollution mask uh, for water and lava. Um, if we jump in ourselves and swim, you can see that's a nice speed up. Okay, now this is a single source block at the top, held with these blocks here, um, and uh, it just falls all the way down into this hole. So if we drop the boat in, it rises up at the same speed as the previous one, and if we swim, yep, we get the same swim speed. Okay, now for the sake of completeness, this is actually the same as this column, single source block at the top, however, I decided to retest uh, with signs all the way around um, to make the experiment more complete and we found something odd if we drop the boat in the bottom it goes nowhere so at this point this raises some interesting questions um, are the signs colliding with the boat which they shouldn't do um, or are they applying a braking force um, to objects in the water stream? And if we swim, uh, we can partially answer this. The swim speed is greatly reduced, um, and we're not touching the signs at all. So I believe that this shows that the presence of the signs against falling water produce a braking force um, for um, objects in the water stream, trying to ascend the water stream. Um, in contrast to solid water where they do not. Okay, next to a set of experiments we've got, we're now testing the presence of a block cardinally adjacent to the water. Um, by that I mean they're, they're on the north, east, west or south axis. So we've got one here cardinally column of blocks here currently adjacent to the water. This is a solid stream held in place with signs and if we place a boat at the bottom it has no effect whatsoever to have those blocks there and if we swim up, yep, back to normal speed. Okay, so this is a single so source at the top, falling water um, with the signs let's see, um, so we expect this not to work 
uh, because the signs alone are enough to stop the boat. So we expect that the boat will sit at the bottom, and yes, it does. And if we swim, swim up, we have the slow swimming speed. Finally, for this series, uh, we have um, we're back to boiling water with adjacent blocks, but this time no signs. So let's see if it was the adjacent block or the adjacent signs that were causing the boat not to move and us to swim very slowly. So the boat's not moving. And the swim speed is slow. So it would appear that the solid blocks currently adjacent um, have the same effect as the signs. Um, even though the boat is not touching and we weren't touching the solid blocks, that braking force is applied. So we're now going to test um, diagonally adjacent blocks. So we're starting again with solid source block column um, and this time I put a couple of columns of diagonally adjacent blocks so one column here and one column here and as this is solid and cardinally adjacent blocks and signs um, have proven uh, to not break um, apply breaking force to uh, ascending objects um, we expect this to work go, the boat shoots up, and if we jump in, we have the fast swim speed, Oop. do that again, ok, so now we have um, diagonally adjacent blocks, one source block at the top, so falling water with the signs, now we expect this not to work, because for the boat to be held down, because the signs um, have proven effective at doing that uh, on their own. However, Minecraft is not without its occasional magic in the way it calculates things and you never know. This could work, it may not. It doesn't. So, the signs are still, um, we have to assume it's the signs, but they're still applying the braking force and the swim speed is slow. So now let's see whether it really was just the signs or whether those diagonal blocks are also applying braking force. So if we drop the boat in at the bottom, it goes up. So diagonally adjacent blocks, plus with the swim speed. Yep. Fast swim speed. Um, diagonally adjacent blocks do not apply a braking force in a falling column column of water. So um, that was the meat of the experiment. Um, we've now got a few columns um, of additional uh, research that I did um, uh, based upon just well, ideas that came to me. The first one was um, whether or not um, <coughs> uh, having cardinally adjacent blocks with a solid so source column here, this is all solid source blocks all the way up, would affect the boat if those adjacent blocks would clip it. Okay, so we know that without these two, with just one at the back, the boat will rise up fine, as we proved earlier on. Um, we would expect um, that the boat would not actually ascend at this point because the boat will actually clip slightly into these blocks because it's wider than one wide, uh, one block wide. So what we should do is now see this is interesting because um, the boat there actually didn't stay right at the bottom as it had done in previous experiments it rose very slightly and then stopped now I'm at a bit of a loss to explain this um, it could be that the body of the sign is holding it down though that would be strange as it's shown no similar behaviour um, in previous experiments, um, certainly with the solid blocks, solid um, source blocks. It could be that the boat is trying to align itself with roughly with the centre of the block it's clipping into. 
Um, so that would be very strange, um, but would make a sort of certain amount of sense. It could be that without the signs, the boat would rise all the way to the top, and that would be the strangest um, conclusion. However, without the signs, the water, as these are solid source blocks, the water would just gush all over the place. Um, even if we tried to trick it out the back, we'd then be creating a flow and the boat would be sucked in. I don't know. Um, I suspect it's not a clipping. Um, it trying to align itself with the centre of the block that it clips, because boats clipped into blocks tend to act very strangely and will face through the blocks. Um, so if we get a little nudge, like that, and it phases off. So it might be that, it might not be, I suspect it's not. If we try to swim speed, we get normal swim speed, so it doesn't appear to be the braking force. Um, certainly that wouldn't make sense, this is solid source blocks. So it's an interesting result, I'm not quite sure how that could be applied. Um, but we'll try the same thing with um, a falling column of water. Um, on the basis that if having the boat clip into these two side blocks enacts some sort of Minecraft magic, um, maybe um, it will work with falling water and make it rise to the top, or at least if it's the clipping, it should align itself with these in the centre of these blocks as that then did. No, so it stays right at the bottom. Oh, don't want to fly. stays right at the bottom and if we swim we get the slow swim speed so not entirely certain how to interpret these two columns here um, this bit here where it rises up slightly it's uh, interesting this column here is uh, falling water um, and it there to um, wonder whether we already know that solid blocks against uh, source blocks will not apply breaking force um, so there's no point in doing this with solid source blocks or rather I'm going to be bothered to rebuild this entire column again um, but it's to test whether um, glass panes uh, as a transparent block will affect the boat Will affect them. Will apply the breaking force, and also um, glass panes don't take up an entire block. So whether that gap there is enough to negate the break to stop it applying the breaking force. So if we drop the boat in, it doesn't move. So uh, the fact that these are transparent and the fact that they don't take up a full, full block um, does do not stop the boat being broken. Uh, having the braking force being applied to the boat. And if we do the swim test, yeah, we get slow speed. Now the final test, um, which I devised shortly before um, starting this recording, um, is to test uh, whether ice does it. Because as most people will know, uh, the next update is going to reintroduce um, Silk Touch's ability to pick up ice blocks. So with ice blocks being placeable, um, there's a possibility we could use them um, in order to put so, um, uh, blocks next to a water source. So we've got an ice block here, and uh, we've got a solid block there as well. So um, we should see the boat either stop at this ice block or stop at the solid block. So up it goes and straight past the ice block and stop at the solid block. So ice blocks do not apply the breaking force when carving adjacent as uh, other blocks do. So that's quite interesting. Um, we try the swim speed uh, this way. Yep, we scoot straight past it. And then we slow right down by here and speed up until we get to the next step. So 
this is reasonably interesting in that um, um, if you were to want to do uh, a swim elevator, so uh, your floats are, sat, uh, are joined by a column of falling water that you swim up and down to get to each floor. Um, normally, if I often demonstrate this, normally if you didn't want to have uh, annoying slowdowns um, at each floor as you swim past them, what you would need to do is make a hole around that the water fell through like this so that you only had diagonal um, diagonally adjacent blocks so if we, we go down here and then swim up we're now not slowed and we connect with the water but we'd have to exit the water stream diagonally okay however if we place ice blocks in here and swim up we now get to have blocks like that and just step straight out Oops, just jump straight off um, so that's could be quite useful um, to stop to, um, to be able to place blocks adjacent. Um, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, there are advantages to having this sort of layout. Uh, one being, um, uh, as you ascend your swim lift, you can actually sit there with your face out of the water just hold space so you don't drown and if you've got blocks in these positions here you would have to then back into the water stream in order to pass each floor and also having this shape here means you can in order to descend quickly uh, with a little bit of skill oh <laughs> you can actually just drop down so, and then re-enter the water stream to break yourself before splatter deathing at the bottom. But it's interesting, nonetheless, that ice um, doesn't do uh, doesn't um, give you the water breaking effect. Um, so, yeah, so that's the experiment I did. And um, as I say, it's not really a tutorial, but uh, hoping you'll find the results. To be useful uh, in designing boat lifts or swim lifts or um, uh, similar uh, other things with uh, water. Um, so, yeah, I will see you in the next video. And uh, that's me. Bye bye.